Hello, uh, welcome to Created to Create, Part 7. Um, we uh, just uh, left off last study series with the flood about to occur. Uh, this is the third event of the four events in Genesis 1 through 11. Um, the creation, the first event, the fall of mankind, second event, third event, flood, uh, fourth event, uh, nations. Uh, that's Genesis 1 through 11. So, uh, to summarize, in Genesis 6, 5, the Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become, and that every inclination of thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. The Lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth, and his heart was filled with pain. So the Lord said, I will wipe mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth, men and animals and creatures that move along the ground and the birds of the air. For I am grieved that I have made man, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. It's interesting because not only... Um, was uh, God going to wipe out mankind, but also all the creatures on the face of the earth? Uh, we'd studied earlier that uh, God had actually put man in charge to rule over uh, the animals. And at this point, um, it shows that God judges a person uh, by their heart, not the outside appearance, but the inward appearance. And man's heart had become wicked. We talked a little bit about Genesis 6, how um, uh, one of the uh, theories of the, um, why don't I read it here, um, the theories about how people became wicked. We have uh, Cain's line, the first murderer, and of his uh, descendants, uh, wickedness, and they increased in their wickedness, and Seth's line, how they increased in godliness, even to the, the point where Enoch, uh, Noah's grandfather, uh, would never even die. God had actually taken him uh, up to heaven. Uh, but then something went terribly wrong. In Genesis 6, uh, it says, 6-1, When men began to increase in numbers on earth, the daughters were born to them. The sons of God saw the daughters of men were beautiful and they married, any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with man forever, for he is mortal. His days will be judged 120 years. Um, I believe that at this point, um, the righteous people uh, from the line of Seth were marrying the unrighteous people um, from the line of Cain and the world became wicked very quickly. It usually takes just a little bit of poison to spoil um, or to kill off. It takes a little bit of uh, rotten fruit to spoil the whole bunch, and I do believe in the relationships between Christians and non-Christians, believers and non-believers, it's easier for the non-believers to pull down the believers. So at this point, the world has become wicked, uh, um, it's really interesting how God grieved, um, how God felt pain. He loves his uh, children, the image of God that he created us to be, and now we have turned from him the entire uh, face of the earth. They were evil all the time, except one man, Noah. And at this point, uh, God announces he is going to uh, um, wipe out the earth with the flood, Noah is to make an ark that measures 450 feet long, 70 feet, 75 feet wide, 45 foot high. He's given exact instructions of uh, how to finish the roof, how to build it, what kind of wood to use. And so uh, Noah, in his obedience, starts working on this thing for over 100 years. And at this point, um, the Lord said to Noah, go into the ark you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation 
take with you seven of every kind of clean animal, male and its mate, and two of every kind of unclean animal, a male and its mate, and also seven of every kind of bird, male and female, who keep their various kinds alive. And throughout the earth, seven days from now, I will send rain on the earth. For forty days and forty nights, I will wipe from the face of the earth every living creature I have made. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded. Noah was six hundred years old when the flood waters came to the earth. And Noah and his sons and their wives, um, and Noah's wife, entered the ark. So there were eight of them. This is to escape the flood. And so, um, as God led these animals into the ark, uh, two by two, um, the, um, the animals probably would have been small, as we discussed. There's no reason to bring on a full-grown elephant. They just eat more. Uh, we also discussed how reptiles, including dinosaurs, uh, at that time would have been brought on the ark, uh, much smaller. And at this point, um, when they exit the ark, the world is going to be much different. Um, we're going to discuss how radiation probably was present for the first time when they stepped out of the ark. Uh, we know rainbows were present. So the world was about to change dramatically uh, in numerous ways, and including uh, the life expectancy of all creatures on the earth was about to change. I believe it's because of radiation. Um, so there's a lot of clues here uh, before uh, the flood versus after the flood. Um, when they talk about clean and unclean animals, um, some people believe that those are uh, what uh, they were allowed to eat and not eat. Um, I believe it could be, though, what was sacrificed and not sacrificed. Remember that God requires the penalty of sin in the Hebrew canon or the Old Testament, a blood offering. And it was actually uh, Jesus walking in the garden that when Adam and Eve sinned, uh, went and made cl uh, uh, clothing with leather skins. Their uh, sacrifice had to be paid for with blood. And I believe that the um, clean animals here were for sacrifice. Uh, for uh, Even though Noah walked with God, he and his family um, knew that they were sinful and that there was a sacrifice that needed to be offered. It turns out that the blood of clean animals never really take away the sin. It's really a prophecy or a uh, foresight of what Jesus was eventually going to do, which Jesus, uh, the unblemished lamb, it would be his blood that actually covers us uh, and our sin for those of us that believe. Uh, it turns out, uh, saying here that uh, at this point uh, Noah was 600 years old uh, when this flood occurred, um, and it re uh, started on the 17th day of the second month. Um, and here's a really great uh, uh, picture. It's not only did it flood, but in Genesis 6, 11, I'll read that. In the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, on the day all the springs of the great deep burst forth, and the floodgates of the heavens were opened, and rain fell on the earth, 40 days and 40 nights. Now, you know, it's, it's strange for us to think that this is the first time it rained. But earlier in Genesis, uh, there's a reference to there was no rain and the waters all sprang forth out of the, the soil and that's how uh, plants were watered. So this, uh, for all uh, appearances, is the first time it ever rained. Not only did it rain and water poured from the sky, but the fountains of the great uh, opened up. And um, even though water is considered incompressible, with the water being subsurface, in the very beginning uh, when we read um, in Genesis 1, it talked about on the second day how water was separated from the waters. So there's two theories here. There's the canopy theory where on the second day uh, there was a canopy of water in the sky that was separated from the oceans below. 
uh, that's Dr. Henry Morris's theory. Uh, Dr. Walt Brown's theory, which I, of course I prescribe to, is that there was the water in the sea and then the subsurface water. Uh, the subsurface water, uh, even though water is considered in uncompressible, uh, was under high pressure, sort of like a pressure cooker. Uh, the temperature was high, uh, the water was under pressure, and at this point, I believe the fountains of the great uh, opened up, or the fountains um, of the deep opened up, and um, water burst forth in such a high pressure that water actually escaped uh, not only our atmosphere, but the gravitational pull. Um, again, in Walt Brown's uh, book, uh, In the Beginning, uh, can be ordered on Amazon.com. It's a great book. He explains that uh, this water escaped the, um, the pull of the Earth's gravitation and formed comets. And if you study comets, you'll find that uh, uh, all comets uh, at some point intersect uh, Earth, and he believes the origin of the comets is actually um, uh, from the Earth. So he predicts that if they ever find what used to be life on Mars, all you're really doing is finding a comet that came from the muddy waters of the Earth, crashed on Mars, and therefore um, that would be the life they found. Nothing that actually ever uh, was created or uh, lived on Mars. It's just uh, comets exploding on various planets. Um, so it's really uh, an interesting um, theory because with these fountains uh, of, of, of the deep um, uh, exploding with the water, um, it answers a lot of questions. With this pressure, um, Walt Brown also believes that this is the first time radiation occurred. Uh, radiation is one of the agents that really uh, uh, ages uh, human beings and animals. And so um, this could be one of the answers of why people lived a thousand years prior to the flood and quickly down to 120. Uh, the radiation could have been present because of almost this nuclear blast that happened uh, with the fountains of the deep. Also, as you use the comets as a clock, uh, it's very complicated um, uh, formula, but, uh, uh, and, and people are still working on it to actually time in when the flood would have occurred. Uh, I don't know that they have that dialed in yet. I think uh, one theory is uh, about 3,200 uh, years BC uh, would have been the time of the flood, uh, but uh, I'm not sure at this point. Anyway, um, before the flood, people lived a thousand years. After the flood, uh, quickly, exponentially, uh, the age dropped and limited uh, mankind to 120 years. So at this point, um, that's when the uh, flood had opened up. Uh, Noah is 600 years old. I think in most of the movies we don't see a 500-year-old guy spending 100 years making an ark, and then the flood happens at age 600. But I think that uh, that's really something we should consider is how faithful it would be to get up and work on building an ark for 600 years when it had actually never rained. So God tells you it's going to rain is going to come and destroy the flood the earth and people had never seen rain but yet Noah uh, believed God to the point of working 365 days a year uh, for uh, over a hundred years. Pretty incredible story. So this concludes um, the Created to Create study series part 7 um, and then uh, we will continue on the flood in part 8. Thank you.